So now that we have WSUS up and running, what do we do with it? Well, let's start by opening up our WSUS tool. So that's down here, Windows Server Update Services. Now, if you remember, we went through our initial configuration. <clears throat> we haven't actually synchronized anything yet. So here on our server, if we click on our server, we'll see some stats. Let me blow this up. All right, so on our update services, this is going to give us some uh, servers administered from this console, how many with errors, how many needs updates. All right, so um, real quick overviews. When we click on server, we're going to see some more things here related to computer status, uh, update status, <coughs> uh, what the current synchronization status is. So, if you remember, when we did our initial configuration, we didn't tell it to synchronize. So, let's go ahead and do that now. Now, that's going to take a little while. So, we're going to go away and we're going to look at a few other things, and then we're going to come back here. And <clears throat> we'll just let this run for a little while. So, let's expand server. And here under options, this is where we can do all of our configurations. So right here is the WSUS server configuration wizard. So if for some reason when you were doing the initial installation, if you click something that you didn't mean to and you canceled that configuration wizard, this is how you can rerun it. But then up here you can also configure everything. So your update source and proxy server is configured here, synchronized from Windows update from another server. Um, notice we can't save anything because the server synchronized, but we don't care. We're just looking. Uh, our proxy server is here. It's going to be a little slow responding because of the synchronization. So let's give it a minute. There we go. Our proxy server settings. Uh, products and classifications. Remember we set that. What do we want to get? Updates from uh, what languages we want to get them in, how to update the schedule. All right, so all of these are part of the configuration wizard. Um, our reports, we actually have to have another reporting tool to get a lot of these. I mean, we can get some reports, but some of them you're going to click on and it's going to say, hey, we need this uh, report viewer to view it. And that's fine. In fact, I think pretty much all of these you're going to need that for. That's fine. We do have our real quick overviews up here. All right. So we have our synchronizations, which will show us our current synchronization status. It's currently running. And then any previous ones and whether they succeeded or failed. Other servers, downstream servers, are servers that are going to get updates from us. So if this is like that bridgehead, the one that goes out and grabs all the updates from Microsoft and then delivers them to other servers to give to clients, you'd see those listed in the downstream servers. Computers are all the computers that are connected to this server using this server as, its, as their source for uh, Windows updates. And... Uh, when you go to configure your workstations for um, updates, you can configure them to use uh, WSUS rather than going to Microsoft. And you'll typically do that with a group policy because that'll just make your life easier. We can also put computers into groups and we can assign different rules for different groups. So let's right click here and we're going to add a computer group and we're going to call this Test Computers. And then I'm going to create another one, add computer group, and we're going to call this one production computers. And then when computers come in, when computers register here, we can put them in whichever of these categories. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, again, through group policy or by manual assignment. And then this right here is going to give us all of our updates. So let me go ahead and look at my synchronization status as soon as my computer decides to respond to me. We're sitting at 10%, so let's stop synchronization at the moment and see if that's gotten enough to give us some updates that we can work with. All right, so let's go to all updates. Now, by default, it's going to show us unapproved and status failed or needed. So let's adjust this and let's say, let's look at any except declined and then any status and then refresh. All right, we have some things to work with. Now, now that we have these, we can update or we can update. That's what I get for looking at the wrong thing. We can approve updates. So here I have some critical updates, so I can choose this one, and I can approve or decline, and then I can also 
group them and view revision history. But let's say I want to approve this update. So I can click approve and then I get to choose who I'm going to approve it for. I can approve it for all computers, for unassigned computers, for production computers, or for test computers. And my options here are approve for install, approve for removal, or not approved. So I can click approve for install. And now those computer this update will be delivered to those computers the next time they go to update. And then you'll see down here more information about the update. In fact, let's take a look at that for a minute. So I've selected this update right here. And this is going to show me the status. Computers with errors, computers needing, computers installed are not applicable, computers with no status. It's going to give me information about my update. So I can scroll down here and see more information of what I may want. And that will help me decide whether I want to approve it or not. So, best practice is have uh, some computers you will deliver updates to, and we'll call them test updates or something like that, test computers, and then we can run them for a week or so, and if it works, then we can go ahead and approve them for all computers. We can also, by grouping computers into these different groups, we can give different updates to different sets of computers as needed. So, again, we just right-clicked, and then approve or decline. And as we do this, we'll be able to adjust our filters and say, show me all of my approved updates with a status of any or all of my unapproved updates. Uh, give me all of them where the install of that have, let's do where they're needed, which I don't have any because I haven't applied anything yet. Uh, and it'll give me all of those uh, updates grouped together like that. And then I can view all updates or critical updates. So get just our critical updates. And there's all of our critical updates and security updates in WSS. Now, now that we've seen this, let's go back to our options because we only talked about these four here: update source and products uh, proxy, product and classifications. Uh, language and files. This has to do with where we get our updates from, what updates are we getting, when do we get them. All right, now we have a couple of other things here that we want to be aware of. And that is, let's start with automatic approvals. So in my automatic approvals, I can create a rule that's automatically going to approve updates. So, and here's a default one. Let's create a new one. I'm going to say when an update is in a specific product. And we can select the product that we want by clicking on this here. And I'm going to uncheck all of them. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find a Windows Defender update. It's down here somewhere, Windows 8, Windows Defender. OK, when an update is in Windows Defender, let's go ahead and approve it for, and let's just automatically approve, we'll do this kind of randomly here, for test computers. So my test computers are automatically going to get that. So I can say, let's name it Wind, Windows Defender Updates, and hit OK. And I now have a rule that is automatically going to approve my Windows Defender Updates. And then I can select it and click Run Rule, and that's going to uh, run it, run that rule again, rule against. See if I can talk today. All of the updates that I currently have, and I have no Windows Defender updates, so that's fine. We didn't approve anything. I also come here, and here are a couple of advanced uh, revisions to updates, automatically decline updates when a new revision causes them to expire, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's my automatic approvals. Here under computers, <clears throat> I can use service uh, or up, use the update services console to assign computers, and that's where I'm at right now. And then if I use that, any new computers that register automatically go to unassigned. Or I can use group policy or registry settings to do it also. And that's going to be the more efficient way to do it. And then in group policy, I would have to put things into different organizational units based on what I wanted them to have. Okay, um, so that takes us through pretty much most of our configuration. 
we can use this to uh, clean up or get rid of old computers, updates, and files. We can choose to have uh, replica downstream servers, um, do rolling updates. We can do email notifications. We can personalize, and we can rerun the wizard. Okay. So at this point, hopefully you have an idea of how you can navigate through and review uh, updates and uh, review and approve updates and use WSUS to control the update process for, or an update strategy for your organization. Now, a couple of other things here real quick. <clears throat> 14 security updates are waiting to be approved, 30 critical updates. Uh, we have no computers registered to receive updates. This is just a real quick update. So every time you come in, it's going to tell you, hey, here's new things you need to be aware of. All right. So when we're done, we're going to go ahead and close it out. And hopefully that gives you enough to get you started with WSUS.